What do the Citroen C0, the Nissan Leaf, the Mitsubishi iMeve, the first generation Citroen Berlingo, the Nissan EN V200 and the Peugeot Ion all have in common? If your answer is they're kind of short range EVs from early in the transition to EVs, well, apart from the Leaf, which is still plodding along in an unloved Western spiral arm of the market, then you'd be right. But it's not what I'm getting at. If your answer is they're all pretty affordable EVs for those first entering the used EV marketplace, you'd also be right. But it's also still not what I'm getting at. If your answer is they have all kind of lacklustre thermal management, like me, today, yeah, again, true, but also not what I'm getting at. The actual thing I'm getting at is this. They all have Chidemo charging ports, as do many used vehicles imported from Japan where Chidemo remains popular. But if, as I do, you live in the US or Europe, Chidemo is and I hate to say this, basically dead. So what's a girl with a Chidemo car to do if they need to make a longer distance trip? Well, get an adapter, of course. Okay, so continuing our slightly weird setup for videos this year, I promise that things will be back to normal or closer to normal soon. This video is split into chunks. This one, which is a bit of an explanation of the whys and the wherefores and the hoops of Chidemo adapters. And then two follow-up videos, because just before the holidays we got an embarrassment of riches at TEHQ. Well, at my kind of northerly sub-office of TEHQ. We got two Chidemo adapters. One from a British company called Acrane, and another one from a Canadian company we've covered before called A to Z. Okay. So one of the reasons this is so important is that these kind of adapters help keep cars like this one from becoming scrap. Alongside the battery upgrade projects, bear in mind that thanks to advances in battery chemistry and energy density, the physical dimensions of the packs in these vehicles are large enough for batteries to provide ranges in the 200 mile region. And I am aware that there are companies selling upgraded packs for first and 1.5 generation Leafs, as well as the iMeve, which is one of my favourite cars ever, period. I haven't yet heard of anything for the Soul EV, but do feel free to drop a comment in the Patreon or Discord chats if you have, because I would love to know. But for those of you who don't have charging at home or who want to take these vehicles on longer trips, it's important to consider carrying an adapter. At many charging stations, it's increasingly common to find a single Chidemo unit, which means a single station failing can terminate or make much harder a long distance trip. Being able to use the much more numerous CCS charging stations or indeed potentially with an adapter being able to use the NAX network as well. Well, that's something that's well worth considering for anyone who's taking even a moderate number of longer distance trips. And after you've got over wondering why it took longer for us to cover CCS to Chidemo adapters and for them to appear on the market, to be honest, the second question you might be asking yourself is, why are they so expensive? The Ukraine unit here that we're going to be testing is currently retailing for £735. That's about $900 on the day of recording. And the A to Z adapter is $969. And the reason is that NAX to CCS adapters are at their heart very simple. The North American charging connector is basically just a slightly cleverer arrangement of the same set of pins that you find in a CCS1 plug. We have a whole series of in-depth videos for those of you who want to dive into the weeds on this, because it is a seriously interesting subject. But at a fundamental level, with the exception of NAX using the same pins to carry the massive amounts of current that are used for high power DC rapid charging, as are used to carry the much lower current you get when you plug your car into a home or low power charger, and magically switching between them. In comparison, CCS with its J1772 little top half uses separate pins for those two jobs. The language of the charging station themselves speak is actually pretty similar though between Tesla's cars and CCS cars. 
This hasn't always been the case, and I'm definitely not going to get into the weeds, but while Tesla's US model vehicles don't speak exactly the same language as CCS cars, the difference between them is almost just like different dialects. With a bit of software tweakery, Nax chargers can understand CCS cars, and Tesla's cars can suck power from CCS chargers. A little side note here, I know there's going to be a bunch of Roberts in the comments telling us just how wrong we are about this, so I'll add that First, the language that Tesla's vehicles did, can, and now speak has evolved over time, just like any language. And two, we did a massive video on this a few years ago, which will be linked down below. Somewhere down there, and also hopefully up there. But at a really basic level, what they need is the physical pins to be connected right. So that's what CCS to NACS and NACS to CCS adapters basically do. They rearrange the pins. Yeah, there's some stuff in there to monitor temperature and so on, and it is a little bit more complicated than that. But at a fundamental level, it's mostly just making sure that things are well built so they don't vaporize under the massive amounts of current that these things have to carry. CCS to Chidemo, though, that's really different. First up, Chidemo cars use an entirely different set of pins, and the control mechanisms and testing mechanisms for I am connected to the charger, and it's safe to turn on power, and so on. They all work very differently. So this device that's going to sit in here needs to interpret the requests from the CCS charger, things like, what's the vehicle's battery voltage? It then needs to translate it into something that the Chidemo car can answer, and then it has to ask the car, get the car's answer, and translate it back to the charger. It has to do that quickly enough that the CCS charger doesn't decide that there's a problem and time out and also quickly enough that the Chidemo car doesn't decide there's a problem and time out. Which is why hidden in both of the adapters we're testing are control circuits that do that translation, and which require power. So both of the adapters we're testing today have different answers to the how do we provide power to that computer. A crane's charger requires attachment to the 12 volt power connection from the car. A to Z's requires the user to install an 18650 battery. Okay, so with all that done, it's time to pick your own adventure. Which of the reviews do you want to watch first? Well, that, my dears, is up to you. Thanks for joining me today. And if you've got thoughts, make sure you leave them below in our Discord chat room, or you can reach out to us on Mastodon. Thanks to the amazing list of people scrolling by on your screen right now. They are some of the more than 1,500 people who help fund this channel through Patreon and YouTube, covering our bills, paying our team, and making sure that we can be 100% independent. If you'd like to join them and see your name listed here, just follow the links below. There's a range of different tiers you can sign up for from as little as $1 a month, or if you pay yearly, just under $11 a year. A massive welcome to our newest supporters, Mac McIntosh, Thomas Tilk, James Erbe, Cosmos, Mr. Hockey, Joseph Guala Este, Michael J. Kidd, Kulek, Gilardo Orzocco, and Douglas Hill. To join the list and get your shout out with me mispronouncing your name, become a paid Patreon member for your moment of fame. And you can even gift membership to someone else whose name you would love to hear mispronounced. If you'd like to support us with a one-off donation, you'll find links below to make Kofi and Bitcoin donations, and we even have an old-fashioned PO box you can reach us at. Address is also down below. And if you're in need of some swag, you'll find our swag store in the down below too. We've got some great content coming up, so make sure you've subscribed on Peertube or YouTube, and we'll see you soon. We make new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. If you want more, the mighty algorithm thinks you'll like this video, but we think this one is also well worth a look. See you soon. And as always, keep evolving!